Good morning, Cardinals. Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hope and pray you're having a blessed and peaceful Holy Week. A couple of announcements before we begin our daily prayer. A happy belated birthday going out to Coach Gallegos. Happy belated birthday. She celebrated her birthday yesterday. Sorry we missed it. I want to make sure we do right by it. So I hope and pray you had a blessed day yesterday and I hope and pray you have a blessed day today. As you have the opportunity throughout the day, please wish Mrs. Gallegos a very happy birthday. Also, just as a reminder, students and teachers, our virtual visit from the Western Catholic Educational Association, or known as WCEA, will be doing a virtual visit of the school today. And so uh, just as a reminder there to please be uh, considerate and possibly flexible if need be. And uh, appreciate all your, your efforts and your work, students, to help us through our accreditation process. Thank you so much, teachers. A special thank you to um, the chair of the WCEA uh, committee team here at St. Charles. That would include Mrs. Minikuchi. God bless you and thank you so much. Also, Mrs. Gaudet. God bless you and thank you, Mrs. Gaudet. And Mrs. Kaprowski. God bless you and thank you, Mrs. Kaprowski. These ladies have been uh, tremendous in terms of their work and trying to spearhead the information that goes into our accreditation uh, documentation and all, all kinds of data and just want to say a special thank you to those three for all their efforts and all their work and that it does not go unnoticed and I'm incredibly grateful for all your work and, and so is the school. So on behalf of all of us at St. Charles, thank you again, Ms. Minikuchi, Ms. Gaudet, and Ms. Kaprowski. In our readings, as we continue on the passion of Christ, let us take a moment to put ourselves in the presence of the Holy Spirit Jesus our Savior and God and listen to today's reading. As we listen to the final moments of Jesus' passion, we hear how Jesus was tortured, mocked, and crucified by the Romans. As he was a political threat to the Romans as well as a threat to the Jewish leaders, they charged and addressed him as the King of the Jews. Jesus was brought to a hill called Golgotha, also known as Calvary outside the walls of Jerusalem to be crucified. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled the passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, as we recall and recount the, the passion of Christ, let us, let us give thanks to God and to Jesus our Messiah for the gift of eternal life in heaven and for dying on the cross for our sins. And why is that, brothers and sisters? Because they love us that much. And brothers and sisters, let us understand that in our own journey of life too, just like Jesus, we all have a cross to carry sometimes. We all have a, a burden to carry with us at times in life. And just as Simon stepped in to help Jesus carry the cross, brothers and sisters, we need to remember that not only does Jesus come in to help us carry our cross as well, to relieve us of that burden, but we've got the support of one another as brothers and sisters in Christ to help one another with those burdens that we sometimes carry in life. And I got to tell you, Cardinals, that there have been so many times in my life where I've been overwhelmed with the amount of love and support that I've been, that I've received from my brothers and sisters in Christ, my own family, to help carry me through some trying times in life. And I pray that all of us recognize how important it is to be there for one another how important it is for us to recognize that when one of our brothers and sisters in Christ is struggling, that we need, need to be there to support them and help call the so-called 
burden, carry the cross, right, that, they're, that, they're, that they've been given. And so let us look out for one another, just as Jesus did. Let us recognize our calling to serve one another, just as Jesus did. And let us recognize our calling to be a servant and to love God's people, just as Jesus did. So I pray that all of us as believers, all of us as a community of believers here at St. Charles, continue on our journey of faith, realizing our calling, which is to be like Christ, and which is to make an attempt each and every single day to serve not only the Father, but the Son and the Holy Spirit. God bless you and thank you. If you could please take a moment now to stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. God bless America and God bless our world. Hope and pray you have a blessed day. God bless. A good Catholic student prays daily, knows and understands our faith, demonstrates a spirit of service. A lifelong learner thinks critically, develops skills and knowledge, and participates in the arts. A person of good moral character accepts accountability for their actions, respects school, peers, and adults, and acts as a good steward of the earth. San Guido Abate de Pomposa, also known as Saint Guy in the United States. Saint Guy lived in Ravenna, Italy in the 11th century. As a young man, he gave everything that he owned to the poor, and he became a monk in Rome. He lived for three years beside the Po River with a hermit named Martin. Now a hermit is a person that lives in complete solitude. That means they live completely by themselves for religious discipline. After this, he joined the monks at Pomposa Abbey. His wisdom and holiness became well known, and soon crowds of people were flocking to see him. The Archbishop Ravina was considering closing the monastery, but changed his mind after meeting with Saint Guy. In fact, Saint Guy was so popular that he was attracting so many disciples and monks joining the monastery that a second monastery had to be built. In his old age, Guy returned to a hermit's life, and he died at Borgo San Donino in 1046 on his way to a meeting with the Emperor, Emperor Henry III, who needed his advice. When we take time each day to be close to God in prayer, we find the help we need to be like Saint Guy and reach out to others who are struggling with problems or difficulties. Today we celebrate the life of San Guido. San Guido, pray for us. Remember during this Lenten time to spend some quiet time with the Lord. <laughs>